Foot, there it is. Foot, there it is. Foot, there it is. Footy, back again. Balls on my feet, baby, let's begin. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> back to the Footy Fetish oh, Show. Shit. Where the fetish is real, the footy is soccer. Footy is what we do, it's what we live, it's what we breathe, it's what we snort every night before we go to sleep. It's what <laughs> we do. Lots of stuff to talk about today, but first, we gotta talk about a couple things. We got some folks on the show. We got my usual partner in crime, Ocho and Booty. Let's begin. Hey! Back on the mic! With the mic daddy. Mike daddy, pleasure to be back as always. We've got, this is probably one of my favorite episodes to date. This is the first time we've ever done this. We've got four guests on one mic, all in the same room. These guests, I'm gonna go right to left on the, the video chat. And I got to sh- say real quick, if it wasn't for the sport of soccer, I would have never met any of these guys. I never went to school with them. I never played on club ball. This is all just purely pick up and just playing soccer. So we'll go from right to left. We got Eddie Cho, Christian C- Claverly. We've got Spencer Maliolo. And we've got Mario. Mario, I'm blanking on your last name. I apologize. What's your last name? Garcia, Garcia Mario Garcia. So because you guys are new guests on the show, we always ask our new guest three questions. I'm going to go with the first question. Booty will get the second, and I'll go back to the third. So, Eddie, my favorite question, what is your first memory of soccer, whether it's playing it, uh, watching it, being taught it? What is your first memory of soccer? My first memory is watching my dad play in a stadium when I was young back in South Korea. Whoa. That is a cool memory. And this is in Seoul, right? Yeah, not professional or anything, but, you know, just watching him play. Just playing. uh, Oh, yeah, I was kicking. I remember vividly kicking the ball around on the sideline while he was playing. That was, like, probably Very cool. How old were you at that time? I was, this is before I came to the States, so I'd say, like, 10. Wow. That's a great memory. Very cool. Christian, first memory, watching, playing. Anything. Um, the first one that pops up, I mean, shit, that's funny. The first one that pops up would be Lions Field, right there on Williams and Kinner. That's wow. where it all yeah. for me. Uh, I was four years old. My mom got me into the sport. Well, it was actually my uncle. He had played at Rome his whole uh, career and stuff, and that was kind of like my big brother to me. And he took me under my wing, gave me my first soccer ball, and started young at four. And that's when I went to Lions Field. And, uh, yeah, I started murdering kids at a young age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Spencer, first memory of soccer. Okay. My first memory is more of just, uh, it was kind of shown to me. Um, I'm the first person in my family to play soccer. No one no one ever played it. No one had any kind of thing. A lot of my family are really good baseball players. So my dad, like, played my pro. He was going to go out to, like, Seattle. And then he got my mom pregnant with me and my twin. And uh, there's a young, young video of me, like, right when I was learning how to walk. And he, uh, my grandpa dropped the baseball and a bat in front of me. And I started kicking the baseball around. My grandpa, <laughs> grandpa he said, uh, who's from, he's from Sicily. He's like, he needs to play football. He needs to play soccer. And uh, that was kind of from there. The first, I, I turned four and I started playing. And that was it. Very cool. Booty, by the way, his last name is M-A-G-L-I-O. Right? Did I spell that right? M A G L I O L O. There it is. And he he pronounces Magliolo, but it's you know it's Maliolo. Maliolo. Right? That G in Italian is like a silent G kind of thing. Anyway, he was at when when we played the uh, the North Shore United, he was on the other team, and I made sure to absolutely say his name correctly. (laughs) Mario, what is your first? uh, Hey, grazie, prego. (laughs) <laughs> my first my first memory of soccer, uh, just playing in the St. Charles League. And I started as a goalkeeper. And my, I started as a goalkeeper. And I think it would be second half, and I would play more on the field. Uh, but, yeah, I was a goalkeeper, and that's how I started into soccer. Uh and I love it since then. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Booty. 
<laughs> Hit him with that second question. Second question, boys. Who's your squad? We'll go back in order. Eddie, who's your squad, man? Uh, I think I'm the most loyal fan here and the longest fan. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the reactions are priceless. No one can see it, but the reactions are priceless. So much, so much uh, success. It's Liverpool. Liverpool. Uh, okay. There you go. There you go. I'm, I'm a big Stevie G fan myself. But by the way, I just want to put out there, everyone in my country is either Man United or Liverpool fans. And now that Cristiano's going back to uh, Man U, I don't know, man. I'm I'm going to be low-key. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just sign up for the emails, man. Just sign up for the emails. For real. You know? <laughs> United does that shit, for real. I got a, I got an email today. See, I'm low-key myself. They, they're trying to offer me the Man United credit card. So I'm telling you, you stay low key, <laughs> real low key. Uh, <laughs> All right, it's my man Christian next, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, my man. Barca. Okay. Barca, you... Mesque on club. That's my team. Uh, so it's crazy, Hugh. So, um, like what I was saying, I came up at a young age. I had stopped playing soccer when I was ten because, I, like, kind of like Spencer, I was going with my family to play. And I listened to my friend, you know, soccer for pussy, blah, 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 played baseball, and I was like, I fuck that. Came back at 12 years old. When I came back, that's when they had, like, positions and everything, like, set up, you know, shit like that. And that's when I started, like, really only getting, like, five minutes in the play. I was just garbage. You couldn't get the ball off the ground. And I just taught myself over time, just watching videos, YouTube, playing yeah. FIFA, and just going in the backyard and watching um, Ronald Dio videos on YouTube and going in the backyard just – Taking the touch of the ball until I got it, and the first time I got the ball off the ground, dude, like it was an amazing feeling. Uh, but led me to Barca was uh, actually it was AC Milan was the first team that like really got me into football. Look at that! And then that next year was uh, when Ronald Dio sparked. That was in two thousand and six was yep. the first year, and Ronald Dio. Really sparked me. Like, that 2005 AC Milan team was fucking cold, dude. Oh, yeah. That's what, you know, that was my first team. And then Barca, and ever since then, Ronaldinho just really uh, opened my eye to the sport. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And connected me to the point where it's my passion now, you know. And I met amazing people like you, all my friends. Yeah. Here, you know what I'm saying? Like, all my, oh, yeah. like, the majority of my friend group is all football. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Like, not too much weeks from first grade, you know. I love yeah. that man. I love whenever somebody brings up those uh those Ronaldinho videos. You remember the one where he would uh he he he'd nail it off the crossbar and he oh, just yeah, keep coming back to him good. one touch. Yeah. Bro, that was the first YouTube video to ever hit a million views ever. Wow. That's ever. right. That's right. That's right. That's crazy. Is that with the gold cleats? It was the gold cleats. It was. The yeah, cleats. that's right. That's right. <laughs> yep. That was fake too, man. No, I think it's fake. Definitely no, not fake. Yeah, that's no, fake. I think it's fake. Nah, y'all tripping. I'm sorry. Tripping. I'm sorry. Y'all to put it down. Run on y'all tripping. What y'all think? What do y'all think? Man, I thought it was fake, fake at first, but the more you keep watching it, you're like, shit. You're like, I, I don't know. If anybody's gonna do it, he could do it. I think he can do it. I, I'm sorry. It's fake. There's so it's many fake. of those videos. Beckham's got a ton of videos. <laughs> Beckham, Beckham's got videos like that too, man. Oh, 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 are you talking about the beach with the garbage? Yeah, can? the trash can. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the same type of video. It's a it's a hype video. It worked, right? It got yeah. a million views. It's the first video ever to a million. It fucking worked. It was great marketing. I believed it at the time, but now that I'm older, I'm like, he can't do that. That's impossible, man. That's what I'm saying, but it's Dino, bro. If anyone could do it, it would be Dino. I'll say that. If anyone could do it, it would be Ronald Dino. I say Dino instead of Dino Sedan. Only a Brazilian. Yeah. Don probably said it. Only a Brazilian. Only a Brazilian. I, love, I love this debate, dude. Yeah, this, is this could go on for a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, my, my, my Italian man, go next, man. Spencer, uh, my favorite team is Chelsea. Chelsea Football Club. It's true. Oh shit! I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So damn. Not really much to say. What made me start liking them? I kind of just was growing up with the soccer friends, and all my people like Manchester United. And I'm that kind of person that's like, if you like this team, I like the opposite team. So, <laughs> <laughs> 
spoiled. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but a lot of my, a lot of my friends, each least they have, they have to this way, and I like picking their rival team as my favorite team, so I have, like, jerseys of all, like, the big clubs, like, rival teams, like, that's very cool, team. and I'll mention you something after he says his team, what I did to mess with Mario is pretty good joke, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let him go for it, yeah. but now, now we need it here, Super Mario, step up yeah. the plate, my man, my, team, my favorite team is Bayern Munich, and the reason why I started liking Bayern Munich, uh, my uncle, he was stationed in Germany a uh, time ago, and he was a big Bayern Munich fan. And so whenever he would be with the family, he would uh, talk about Bayern Munich. And I would, so they got some gangster ass players like Rivery, uh, Robin, uh, Luis Gustavo, Dante, you know, the list goes on. Um, and we won Champions League, uh, Thrash in Barcelona in the way there. So that's great. Yeesh. <laughs> in the room. He has, to, <laughs> he, has, he has to do it. He has to come. Yeah. It's he has to. always been like that between him and I. But yeah, Messi, until Barcelona so, wins the next one. With Messi. And, and Boateng got sniped. <laughs> <laughs> and then he chipped Neuer, the best goalie. With his yep. weak foot. Yep. His weak foot. Yep. All right. I missed All right. the question. Yeah. Now nah, he just had to bring Barcelona okay. into hey, his well, shit. What, so I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is Mario loves Bayern, so I bought about three Dortmund jerseys. And I wear it. How is he near? Zero? He's got the yeah, Porto Royce. He's got the, he's got the he's Holland. Gotta have Royce. He's got to have Royce. He's got to have Royce. That's cat. That's cat. Every single one. Nice. Nice. I've never seen it. Before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Fresh, dude. awesome. Next, next, next. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going. All right. So this next one is kind of related. It'll probably be similar to that second question. But this next one is: Who is your favorite player, past, present, or you know, male, female, whatever? Well, uh, let's go reverse order. Mario, who is your favorite player, or who is a player that relates to your play style? We just want to get an idea of. Your uh, your favorite type of player? Uh, I want to say I want to say my favorite player is Sergio Busquets. I can play. I want to say I play. I want to play like him. And then okay. Nigel De Jong. Those are those are very unique picks. I've never actually heard someone say that before. So, yeah. what about favorite to watch? Who's your favorite to watch? Fuck. Uh, my favorite to watch. Probably be fix it on I Bayern. Love, I love from Bayern Munich. I love watching uh, Joshua Kimmich and Coleman. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Those are classy players for sure. All right, Spencer, give me yes. a player that plays like you, and then one that you like to watch. Um, a player that plays like me that I like to base my game off of. Um. I'll just go with my favorite player first. My favorite player all time, probably, that I've enjoyed watching since a young guy was, uh, I like Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho, but uh, obviously, that's a lot of everyone's favorite. Player. I just love the whole skills and flair that he brings to the game. A player that I like to watch, and I know my position that I play now has nothing to do with him, is uh, Insomne. Lorenzo Insomne. So, I love, I love Oh, it's Lorenzo. What are you talking about? Anyways. It's all right, man. It's all right. We knew. Yeah. If you did this, it makes it easier. We all know if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I say it. I say it. I say it. They all say I say hey. the What did I say? Yes. Anyway, said it's on you. I like watching him, one, because he is like the staple for that left wing in Italian football right now. Two, he's just... He's just a quality player. He has that signature goal, cutting in from the left wing to the right, get to the top of the 18, that curler back post. Oh, man. It's so I got a cool, fun fact for you. Just this last summer, the Italians invented a word, and it was based off of Insigne's style, that same type of goal where he cuts in from the left and he gets that bend. It's called That's a awesome. tira giro, and it's, a, it's like a turning – I don't know the literal translation, but it's that goal that you just described. He's a left winger. He likes to cut in on his right foot and put that 
just crazy spin to the back post. So they now call this goal the Tirajiro, and it's linked to Lorenzo Insigne because of the goals he was scoring in the Euro. So that's exact Tirajiro. That's a fun fact. I, j I just learned this recently from, uh, uh, what's his name? Bonetti? I forgot his first name. That, uh, that announcer, that Italian announcer. Anyway, not important. Christian, who is a, uh, who's a player that you like to emulate your game or just enjoy watching? Andreas Iniesta. Whew. That is the player that I've always mirrored and tried to, to address in, to my game in, in you know, my form. Um, yeah. The player that, you know, like I said before, Ronaldinho, but once I got onto that Barcelona and I saw Iniesta when he was number 24 coming up, that's when I was just like, okay, like I like him. And um, I forgot who he said. Laudrup was his Laudrup, I think his name was, or was his uh, his idol. And I started even looking him up um, as well. Hmm. I don't know if Michael Laudrup. Michael Laudrup, yeah, yeah, Michael Laudrup, yeah. That's who Iniesta said was his idol that he watched, and I started to kind of watch him as well. But um, damn, I'm gonna check him out. Damn. Yeah. Mm. So when it's to and yes, to watch him playing in my game, that's that's who I try. I've always cool. That's a gem. Always like being a, I guess the intelligent one with it, where like my vision is my main um, asset because I'm the center of it. You know, my my vision's always been you know my uh, my fortune. Yeah, you you play with your head, not your feet. Exactly. Oh, pure love taught us that. Hell yeah, hell yeah, brother. All right, Eddie. Last one. Last but not least. Favorite player that you like to emulate your game off of or just watch? Um, a player or like a play style that I like to imitate is, uh, is a former right back from Bayern. His name is Philip Lahm. We play left back. Ooh. That's not what I watch. But, Hell yeah. But my favorite player of all time, I think, has recently changed, and it's Sonic Man. Just because he just brings me some joy. When I watch Every, who doesn't like that guy? Right? Yeah. We were okay. talking about this the other day. Right. He's a, he's right. a great player. Yeah, for sure. I think he has finally surpassed uh, some of the other pet, better players that we've had uh, in our country. Who was your favorite player before him? Martin. Yeah. Uh, favorite player before him, I think, if I'm being honest, I think it was like either Sergio Ramos or Cristiano. But, wow. Yeah. Just because I grew up, you know, although he played for my rival team, uh, you know, Ronaldo kind of brings me back a lot of childhood memories. Definitely. But now Definitely. it's, it's you know, I mean, he's, he's surpassed on so many different levels. He's English, man. Right? So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's really impressive. They, uh, Instagram was dropping a whole bunch of his old Man U highlights, and it was just like flashback after flashback. Like, I could tell you where I was when I was watching those goals happen. It was just like yeah, a time machine. I was like, I remember that one. Remember that one. It was yeah. cool. It's cool. Well, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for one reason and one reason, one reason only. That is to talk about Champions League soccer. Cue the Champions League music. There it is. Yes. Falsetto. Love it. So we've been, we've been meaning to hire uh, an orchestra. So, yeah, we, we need to get them on board, Hugh. <laughs> get the, the violins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, ladies and gentlemen, as we've done in the past, we have been doing a PTI style of episode where we each get about two to three minutes to, to give our take on our predictions. For this episode, we're going to go through each group and rank who we think will finish first, second, and third, and then give like a, pre a brief description. I've got a timer over here. Booty, why don't you start us off? We're going to go over to Group A. Take it away. Let's go. Group A, ladies and gentlemen, Manchester City, Club Bruges, RB Leipzig, and PSG. Who's ready for the oil derby, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> ESG, <laughs> Man City. Oil all day. Drown them in oil. It's coming. Drop money on them. We're going to tar and feather them, but it's going to be oil and cash. Just throw, this, throw that shit. Make it fucking rain. Uh, tell you what, the way PSG is looking, it's kind of sexy. Uh, we'll just a tiny bit. I'm going to take PSG to win that group. We'll go City. 
and I, I'm going to say this, the oil derby, I'm, the hot take right here, they draw bo- both times. Pep, Pep really? isn't going to overthink it just yet. Pep overthinks that later. It's later rounds where he overthinks it. So he'll come out firing, but I bet you they're going to be so evenly matched that it goes to a draw. But PSG wins the group. Manchester City in second. I'm, RB Leipzig just going to cut cut close. They're going to cut out. Uh, Club Bruges, thanks for playing. Where's our boy Dennis? As a matter of fact, I don't think Dennis is with Club Bruges anymore, Hugh. I think you know who the player is to watch with Club Bruges? His name yeah, is Noah Lang. Noah Lang. There you go. Noah Lang. Hot take. Keep Hot an take. eye on him. Hot take. But, yeah, um, after the messy move, man, um, you know, we talked about it forever, and now it seems to be that our boy Mbappe is on the move as well. Um, we were always wondering where Messi would fit in. It seems like Poach is gonna gonna figure it out. Uh, he always does. So we're gonna see where Messi fits in. He's gonna squeeze him in. He'll make it work, and I think he makes it work well. Uh, and it seems like it's a lot of guys. They just got. I, I think they had the best transfer window of all time. So why not follow it up by winning a group, right? Uh, I got. I got to go with that. Also, let's not forget the biggest lesson of today with the Ronaldo move, and that's fuck City. So fuck City. Yeah, PSG. I know these boys think about it too. Fuck City all day. I would have been very upset if he went to City. I'm a big Juventus fan, guys. Even though I'm wearing the West Ham today, but I, I'm still I'm not completely upset that he went back to United. I'm kind of I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's like breaking up with a girlfriend, you know. It's just, it's it's over. It was fun. We slutted around for two years. It didn't work out. We had goals. We didn't get we didn't meet the goals. It's time to move on, you know. <laughs> but it's gonna be really fucking cool to see him back. Uh, and fuck city. Uh, who's next? Who wants yeah, to? Uh, step let's up go. Next, guys? Let's bring it. Let's get it into the room. Let's go with Mario. Mario, Group A. Give us your top three or top four. You can give us top four. Group A. All right. Yeah, uh, well, this is a, to start start off. This is a wonderful group to watch soccer. Uh, oh yeah. Because Leipzig is a a team that is overshadowed or shadowed by Bayern Munich and Dortmund. And uh, I feel like with the American uh, coach, they're going to do well um, in the season anyways. But anyways, uh, Manchester City, I'm a City fan. I, I'm i going for Man City is going to win this group because I feel like PSG is going to, uh, have, you know, just bail – at certain certain times of this of this tournament in the group stage, um, Man City is going to catch on all slipping uh, with Pep being the genius of a uh, coach that he is. Uh, he's going to get the best of Pochettino, and Manchester City will win this group. Um, so yeah, uh, I like yeah. it. I like this. Yeah. Give us give us a hot take as far as like a result that you think will surprise everyone in this group. Oh, I, uh, I think a hot take would be whenever PSG gets upset by Leipzig at, in Germany. Um, just because I feel now that the Germans are back in the stadium, uh, it's going to rock the, uh, you know, the attendance. Uh, but I think, you know, Messi's going to win the group with a whole bunch of goals in that group, but, uh, but yeah. I dig That's that. Okay. Right. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, here we go. Spencer, you're up next. Okay. Start the clock. Here we go. <laughs> group A. I agree with what Booty said, and I agree with what Mario said on this group has the money. This is where teams are mm-hmm. putting this money to buy these players. It's mm-hmm. insane. PSG has four of the, I'd say three of the best transfers this window, and they got two of them for free, Ramos and uh, and mm-hmm. Messi. Like, that's insane. It's absolutely quality. I have PSG taking this group going, mm-hmm. going pretty far in the tournament in general. Um but one thing I do like to say, I agree with what Mario says with Leipzig and the upset, but I think it's going to be over City. I think Leipzig's going to beat City in, in Germany. I think it's going to be an ass with them, too. I think it's going to be like a 3-0, 3-0 skunk over City in Germany. <laughs> I'm telling you, totally. Leipzig, Leipzig is a team that, that you have to uh, you have to like, 
watch watch out for it for sure. And I know Club Brood used to have a, a I think it was like an African striker. It was a, it was a he was pretty quick. But he, he scored like three goals against Real Madrid. Um, I forgot was that was that that was Club Brood wasn't it in the uh, Champions League like that long ago? You think were you thinking Dennis? Was it Dennis? Is it Dennis? Is that his name? So. And he did the Ronaldo celebration. That's it. Yep. He's yep. not there, is he? I don't think. No. Oh, no. well, if he's still there, I, I, I mean, he, he turned on for the Champions League. That last season he had, it was insane. Um, other than that, Man City has a quality team, and they've been putting Jack Grealish in, which I wish a lot of these other teams would start doing. Oh, is that my time? No. no that's, oh. Yeah, that's it. Just wrap, wrap it up. That's good. Oh, uh, I just like that they're actually getting these people that once they come off, they actually put them in. You know, they're giving Jack his minutes right now. I know they have some injuries still. But the one thing I would like to see is get him in an actual position that he wants to play, which I think Pep nice. is going to work around him because this is obviously the, the goal of that transfer. Movement. But other than that, PSG going in, Man City going second. But I like to see Leipzig and Man City pop in that little group of like, eh, is it going to happen or is it not? Got it. I mm-hmm. dig it. Okay. Chris, what you got? Christian, timer started. Uh, so just to clarify, we're talking about strictly Group A and going through the groups, right? Yeah, just Group A. We'll move on to Group B after we all kind of talk about it. I I agree. Um, I'm going to go with PSG, Man City, Leipzig, Club Bruges. You know, the GOAT, he just went over PSG. Nothing much to say. He's back with his partner in crime, Neymar. Just like Booty and Ocho. You know what I'm saying? Um, (laughs) Robbie and Ocho. He's he's Neymar. I'm Neymar. I'm definitely Neymar. For sure. <laughs> Booty's the goat. Yeah. He, does, he does have yeah, that. Booty's hot. the goat. I have Both no problem is- passing it off. Um, but I do agree with the hot take that Spencer was talking about uh, with Leipzig. I don't. I don't agree with the three nil though. But I'll say maybe like a one nil upset in Germany to Man City. Maybe a two one. Uh, maybe like a um, 80th minute uh, winner or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I was doing too much. Extra than what they usually do. Um, but yeah, Man City second, PSG first, for sure. All right, dig it. Eddie, you're up next. What you got? Yeah, uh, for Group A, I actually have City top in the group, PSG, Leipzig, and then Club Bruges. But um, I guess my hot take is going to be Club Bruges upsetting Leipzig at home. Wow. Uh, and I also I dig, that. I dig that. Yeah, and I I don't know. I, I think PSG is going to have a very solid team, but in my opinion, I think they're going to struggle with a bit of team chemistry when they start to face some real competition outside the league. So I have them going far, but not too far. I don't think they'll win the Champions League. I have them going out of either semifinals if not quarterfinals. Interesting. Any reason why? Is it just because of their identity? Lack of an identity? Too many egos? I mean, in the past, you know, history has where, like, you know, they played in such a, like, a, what, farmer's league, they call it. Yep. That most of the time they come out, you know, with real competition outside of group stage, they always seem to struggle. And I think that's going to be the case. A lot of players are also coming from different styles of football. I don't necessarily think Messi might fit in all that well, going from Tiki Taka keeping possession most of the time to counter attacking PSG side. But we'll see. That's just my take. Okay. I dig that. All right. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up. I've, I've got a hot take just from the rankings. I'm going to go. Damn, this is tough. I'm going to go Man City first, then PSG. Um, I, I think we're going to see PSG struggle like we saw Barcelona struggle when they first got together with Messi, Suarez, and Neymar. If you go back and you, uh, and you look at the, the very beginning of those guys getting together, there was a struggle for them to figure out their chemistry and figure out their roles in that team. Um, so I'm going to put them at second. First, Pep's been there. He knows what to do. He's been with this team. He just added Jack Grealish. I think we're going to really see Jack Grealish shine once he understands Pep's system and what Pep is looking for. It's always difficult to play for, for Pep because he's so demanding. 
He asks you to do so much, counter-pressing, all these different things. So that right there, I think Man City is going to just dominate this group. My hot take is I think Club Bruges is actually going to find a way to get third. If we look at RB Leipzig, they just lost Upamecano and Konate, and they just lost their head coach. Um, he just went Nagelsmann. to Bayern. Nagelsmann. Nagelsmann, thank you. He, I will say they just got the American. Jesse Marsh is now coaching RB Leipzig, but it's a brand new team, a brand new coach, brand new team, and you've lost your two best center backs. Um, I don't know if they'll be able to hang like they did in the past. RB Leipzig, to me, is going to be a lot like Lille in that they sold all their best players just because they're not really focused on winning a Champions League. They're trying to build the club. Uh, so with that being said, I think that's my hot take. I think RB Leipzig, uh, I think they, they get upset by Club Bruges. Club Bruges has been building to, to play in the Champions League, and um, I think they finish third. That's a hot take. It'll probably be Leipzig. But um, I mean, that's a good point. That's a good point, you know. That's a yeah. good point, too. Everybody's still Appreciate stuck on, on what RB Leipzig did a couple of years ago, making that Final Four, you know, and it, 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 it's easy to, to forget. New coach, like you said, Upa Meccano gone that anchor that they had in the back. So it's – but, hey, faith in Jesse Marsh. Let's roll, baby. USA. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. That, 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 the thing that I, that I heard uh, Eddie talk about, the chemistry from PSG, with, uh, and the same thing with you, saying how like, they're kind of getting – I'm very interested in seeing Ramos and Messi on the same team. I feel like that is going to be something that's just going to – Yes. Like, how are the celebrations going to work? Are they going to fight each other? <laughs> you know that scene in Step Brothers where they go to like shake and then hug and then they're like hand around the throat? That's what we're gonna see. They're gonna be like, oh, 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 oh. and he's like puts them in like a, a wrestling move. <laughs> That's what we're gonna see that celebration. We're gonna be like, what the fuck? Are they happy? Are they trying to fight each other? What's going on? Messi gonna rub yeah, his no, nutsack totally all over weird. his drum set, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Let's move on over to Group B. We're going to go reverse order here. Group B. Group B. B. Why don't you go first, Hugh? Group B. This one's one's fucking wild. This is, uh, for me, this is the group of death of the Champions League. We've got Liverpool, Atletico Madrid, FC Porto, and AC Milan. My boys, coming back in the Champions League after so many goddamn years. I'm starting the fucking timer. You already know what I'm thinking. I'm going to go super hot, put AC, Mil- AC Milan number one overall. I'm just going to come out the gate and say it. I'm going to go Liverpool number two. Whoops. Let me get that timer going. He got excited. Yeah, it got way too excited. Milan. It hurt AC Milan. We haven't been like, to the Champions Cube. League in fucking <laughs> seven years, man. That's right. Uh, so I'm going to go AC Milan, Liverpool. Atletico Madrid, Porto. I think Porto are a very strong team. Yeah. But, um, again, I, I don't think they're necessarily focused on Champions League. Atletico, Atletico Madrid just got some great pieces this summer. I think they're going to be very strong. Uh, now, granted, that's the fan side of me. If I'm looking at this from an actual sporting side, I think it'll be Atletico Madrid, Liverpool, AC Milan, Porto. I think AC Milan are going to struggle. We don't have the depth to compete with these other teams. Uh, or the money, you know, we're still having money issues. We can't even sign a player for an eight mil contract. Like that's where we're struggling. That's the crossroads. We can't sign our fucking best player for eight mil. We had to let Donnarumma go because he wanted eight, and we only wanted to give him seven. And it was like, Jesus Christ, are we struggling that much? So um, I'm very hopeful as a fan that we'll finish in the top two. But this is the group of death, so it's going to be a very, very tall hill to climb. Um, I'm very excited to see this group. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna pass it over to Eddie. Hey. What you got, boy? Right. So for Group B, I have Liverpool top of the table, uh, top of the group, Atletico, Porto, and Milan. So exactly how it's showing right now. Yeesh. I'm ready for it. Yeah, Bring it on, fellas. I'm, I'm expecting the uh, I'm expecting the worst here. Any yeah. reason uh, why Liverpool will finish above Atletico Madrid? I think with Virgil van Dijk coming back, I think he's going to instill some confidence back into the right. team as a big right. man. And uh, I think we're looking solid. I know we haven't signed anybody, 
uh, significant, but I, I heard some rumors about Mbappe. I know Real Madrid's in the talks, but you know we just let go of Shakiri, and I know we're in the market for a potential winger or a striker. So we'll see. But Diego Jota is looking fairly strong at that, you know, second string striker position behind Firmino. I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about the team. Atletico, you can never, you, you can never count them out. And uh, I think Porto is going to be the hot take, beating Atletico away. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like they're going to do somewhat well, but they're not going to necessarily clinch that second place spot. And I have AC Milan struggling quite a bit because they have uh, some of the older guys playing up top, like Zlatan or Olivier Giroud. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking you guys don't have so much depth in the team, so I'm thinking you know, those guys you might experience some injury and, uh, you know, potentially struggle in the league. You haven't been in Champions League for quite a few years. So. Definitely agree. Uh, real quick, to add on what you were saying, Liverpool, I heard a rumor that they're trying to sign Jeremy Doku from Wren. The, uh, the young Belgian who had a really successful summer with Belgium. Uh, yeah. That could be a fucking amazing addition to Liverpool. I just don't you see don't him. Feel like another Saudi Iran, my name. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like a league out from Easily. Out. Easily. And I think that's why they're looking at him. All right, let's go. Let's move on over to Chris. Who you got? Group B. Um, group B. I'm going to have to say Atletico, Liverpool, AC Milan, and Porto. Um, Appreciate I'll put it, Atletico bro. first. Um, they just had a few good signings. I like the Argentine. Rodrigo De Paul, he's good. Good good addition. Um, yeah, Definitely. For sure. Um, and he was a very big piece for Argentina over the summer. Huh? He was a very big piece for Argenti- Argentina over the summer. Oh, absolutely. Copa. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a really good point. Midfield, for sure. Um, uh, the reason why I don't have Ace Milan in the top two is Donnarumma just losing him. That's that's a big L. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, kind of like what he was saying, a little older guys, uh, Giroud and, and Zlatan, don't get me wrong, they're still killing shit. Um, experience the best teacher in life. Um, but yeah, that's why Liverpool, they do have a, a solid squad. That's my favorite EPL team. Um, I was always Barca and La Liga, but EPL wise, Liverpool is my team. But they're kind of shambling back, getting getting together, getting it together type. But they'll definitely move on. But yeah, that's my hot take. And Van Dyke yeah. for sure is fire. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I'm curious to see if he can go this full season. Because uh, yes. you, you experience a lot of atrophy when you tear your ACL. The minute you just, tear your ACL, you just went through this? No, 2018, I tore it. This man tore it three times. Oh, yeah. So you know very well. You're, you're a machine, Eddie. I know this. You're a machine. Because <laughs> you can still compete at, at a higher level. Uh, $8 million dollar man, man. He is hurt. Spencer, who you got? Groupie. All right. Club B, I'm going to be short and sweet. Yeah. Y'all can like it. Y'all can hate me or love me. That's all it's going to be. Oh, all right. I like this. Yes. So, yes. Porto. Porto is going to be in third. Milan is going to be at the bottom. You, I know you're going to hate me. I'm an inner Milan fan, so I don't really know hey, about this. <laughs> cool, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Atletico cool, is taking the lead, and Liverpool is going to be in second. My hot take on this group is going to be – Atletico just coming in like the typical Atletico, dirty, physical, off the ball from the starting whistle to the end of the final whistle, just coming after them, just getting in the game. Don't count yes. them out to the, last, to the whistle blows. I'm telling you right now, this team, Atletico, they have this season. I believe they have a lot of confidence going in. I haven't watched any of the games in La Liga. I watched a preseason game, but give or take, doesn't really matter. I know how uh, the head coach, Simeon, Simeone, am I saying it right? Simeone. Yeah, uh, how he coaches and how he treats his players and they're at the club. And it's almost like it's, I want to say a family, but it's not even, it's like he's hes their kids and he just wants to see them fight. And he's he wants to be yeah. on the field, put a jersey on and go make a tackle. And I love seeing that from a coach. That's something that I grew up wishing that I could have 
bit of spirit a part of that. Yeah. 100%. That was great. Love that. <clears throat> Love that. All right, Mario. Second right. to last. Who you got? My take would be uh, out of Group B, I say I think AC Milan is going to surprise this group, especially uh, uh, Atletico Madrid and Porto. Um, I, love to go, I mean, I feel like AC Milan has a lot to prove. And I think they're gonna finish. Uh, I want to. I'm gonna be optimistic. I want. I would say they're gonna finish second in Liverpool. Oh, yes. <laughs> Damn, bro! I appreciate and that. Madrid in Europa League. Uh, because I don't know. There's, diff- there's a whole bunch of factors to th- to this group, but this group is very interesting, and uh, it should be fun to watch. That's all I'm going to say. And the hot take I would like to say is that uh, AC Milan will be AC Milan. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, AC Milan will be uh, Atletico Madrid both times. Damn. Damn. Okay, so you have Liverpool, AC Milan, Atletico Madrid, FC Correct. Porto? Correct. Right. Okay. Booty. All right. Put me on the clock, baby. All right, I'm gonna piggy- piggyback off a couple of things you guys said because great minds think alike. Eddie, I'm gonna start with you, man. I like the fact everybody's somehow forgotten that that Virgil Van Dyke's back, man. Uh, that's a that's a whole different persona in that back, man. That's a that's that's what they were missing on that back line. He's gonna tell fucking Trent stay in his fucking spot. Stop trying to play midfield. He's gonna fucking he's gonna fucking do it, man. So I think I'm gonna put Liverpool up there now. The thing we gotta forget, don't forget about. A couple years ago, let's rewind for a minute. Champions League, Atletico Madrid, round of 16. Liverpool. Liverpool scores the goals. They're going to score so many goals. They're going to they're gonna come at you. They're going to fucking come at you like this hurricane we're about to get. Problem is, Simeone <laughs> likes to sit back and says, come on, let's bring it. Bring it. I'm going to sit back here. I'm going to bore you the fuck out until about the 90th minute, and then we'll go off on you. Right? I and I usually, I usually like – styles of coaching like that man because it's just like it, it's weird right it's out of the ordinary and like you guys also said i'm gonna piggyback off the fact i like simeone because he he cares about the players you can tell he makes it a family there it's a family affair but at the same time man the only thing i don't like about that style of play is eventually it's gonna bite you in the ass right and eventually it's a lot of times gonna come at you, after you so i'm gonna put ac milan second i'm gonna put atletico madrid third and i'm gonna put porto at fourth but i'm gonna tell you what porto we shouldn't sleep on either I really like this being the group of death as well. Um, it's either between this one or the one we just spoke of. You know, it's either it's either A or B. Um, I'm leaning more towards B. Porto, we forget. Pepe in the back, another solid anchor. Since we're on a solid anchor, it's it's like a theme tonight. Um, another guy, the ageless wonder. You know, it's it's a shitty gas station wine. You think you pop it open, you're like, oh man, never mind. Pepe is this fine fucking wine that I got for like five dollars. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love it. I love it. And, 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 and they're the oh, ones that knocked yeah. out my squad, you know, last year. So I, I don't ever Ooh. want to sleep on them either. And at the same time, the only reason I can't put them in third, uh, you know, is only because I don't know enough about them to, to be completely honest with you. So Liverpool, AC Milan, Zlatan carries the team. And then we got, we got, uh, Atletico in a close third, Porto and fourth. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Love this. No, All right, I, so I, I like the fact that, I, that you put the uh, underdog with Porto. I agree. I agree 100% with what you said with that. It, totally capable. Totally capable. Let's not forget. You know? We've seen it happen in we'll the past. It. Group C, Group C, Group C, ladies and gentlemen. It is not as exciting as you would hope it would be, but we need to take a look and see Group C. We got Sporting Lipson. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Booty, what did you call it? Group what? Group C. Is it Group C? Group Group C. Group C. There it is. There it is. No, I'm glad you did. Uh, (laughs) We always need to see this group. And we're talking sporting. Sporting. We got Borussia Dortmund. We got Ajax. We got Bastikas over there from Turkey. Thanks for playing, Bastikas. It was very fun. Um, Me personally, I'm going to go. It's about time, you know, that – Okay, Dortmund kind of has a shaky start. I'm going to go Dortmund, Ajax, Sporting, 
Pastikas don't sleep on sporting either. Like we said about Porto, it's it's a league that not a lot of people pay attention to. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't pay attention to it. Keep your eye on them. But Ajax, you know Ajax is always going to show up when it's time. Uh, so I can't I can't put them above Ajax. And Dortmund, they're going to start slow out the gate like they always do, but they're, they'll pick up steam. Uh, pending Holland doesn't go to PSG. So Interesting. There's that. There's, that. there's those rumors. It's a little clause you're going to put in there? Yeah, because <laughs> then I don't know what they're going to do. It's, it's, All right, it's, so you have yeah. you have Dortmund, Ajax, Sporting. Yeah, Borussia, Holland, Ajax, Sporting. <laughs> yes, sir. What you got, Hugh? Yeah, this one uh, this one's tough for me because I feel like all three of these teams are kind of evenly matched. Uh, Sporting dominated the Portuguese league last year. They have some really sneaky players. Uh, one of them is Paulinho, the striker. Mm. Uh, they also have. Oh, that was your timer. I'm gonna stop there. We'll go real quick. Uh, their left back, Nuno Mendes, is rumored to be on his way to Man City, but he's got a buyout clause of like 70 mil, so it's unlikely he'll leave. He is going to have a fucking blast. He killed it in the World Cup qualifiers for Portugal when Guerrero was injured and had to step out. They put in this kid. He fucking killed it. He had one of the highest ratings every single qualifier for the Portuguese national team. Who you that being said, what's up? Mendez, you up? said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nuno. Whew. And he's only yeah. 19. Yeah. Jesus. He's already world class. Uh, another thing that I that I have to mention is, uh, like Booty said, our boys Ajax. It's, a, it's an identity. It's, a, it's, like a, it's an assembly line. They just build amazingly talented players. Looking at this team, they have two young Brazilians and David Neres and Anthony. Those kids are really fun to watch. You've also got a Mexican... Um, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, that's really good as well. I'm just going to drop my, my four real quick. I think it's going to be, Oh, I hate doing this. I'm going to go Ajax Dortmund sporting Basikis. What? Uh, just because Ajax, I've been following this Ajax team. They have a lot of really great talent on this team. Uh, they have a lot of depth as well. Uh, and the Dutch league is really not that competitive, so they can focus a lot on the Champions League. So I'm going to go Ajax, Dortmund, and I, I think Holland's on his way out. I think they're going to take that Mbappe money, and they're going to go buy Holland. Uh, let's move on to – I'm going to start with Spencer. Spencer, who you got in this group? Okay. Start the timer now. I'm going to tell you right now, Dortmund's not going to lose a game in this whole bracket. <laughs> Dortmund's not going to lose one game in this whole That's bracket. the hot take right there. I love it. <laughs> the hot talk of the day, there is no talking. This is just going to be watching. Watching this yellow and black team wax some motherfucking ass in this group. I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I love it. Love the team it. I do agree with. That one I would like to watch, and I'm interested in watching is Sporting, because I haven't seen them in the Champions League in a little while either. And I'm also I like the the drive teams get. Same thing Milan coming in. They they go out to the gates because they know this is an opportunity that they actually you Ace team works for this for this for this the tournament. Every team in the yep. world wants to be in this tournament. So, right. but uh, if I'm gonna do my order, I'm doing Dorman. I'm gonna do uh, Ajax, even though I want Sporting to kind of be in that second position, but. Off of my knowledge of what I've seen them, I'm Keep going. to seek this. That's it. Okay, I got him. Uh, let's go on to Mario. Who you got? You're on the timer. All right. Uh, first and foremost, I, I got to say this for my arch nemesis. They're going to finish. Dorman is going to finish first in the group. Uh Following with uh, Ajax uh, because they got easy, you know, uh, domestic league. Uh, so I think they're going to you know, do well in the group. But Dortmund is pretty strong in that group. Uh, and, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, the other team, they're irrelevant. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you got you to gotta rank them. Who you want? Dortmund, Ajax, you got to rank the next two. Sporting. <laughs> All right, I say Dortmund first, yep. Ajax, and then Sporting in Europa League with Besiktas. Sporting. 
Kasikas coming up. Get this man his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Timer, perfectly. Well done. Let's go to Eddie. Who you got? Group C. Um, I'm the, I mean, I gotta. I don't have much. I, I gotta say the same thing what Spencer said. My top four or for the standing, I think it's gonna be Dortmund, Ajax, um, Sporting, and then you know Besiktas. Do I have much? Do you think? Do you think uh, Dortmund will lose a match in this group? Um. No, I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. I, I think they'll have a couple of ties maybe, but I think they'll be able to just somewhat cruise by. Oh, by the way, i like to point out, I, I do think Erling Haaland is the best striker right at this moment right now. Oh, my God. I agree. If I had a I, I disagree. I disagree with that, and we'll talk about that later. There's parts of his game that I don't like that we've talked about in the past, but we oh, will yeah. save that for later. Yeah, I, I think he's the best striker right now, but that's just my take. We will see. We will see. it. I'll, we'll talk later, but uh, I like that take. Uh, Christian, you are last but not least. Who you got in this group? Same. Same with these two. Exact same. same. Um, Dortmund's not going to lose. Maybe a tie um, or two. Um, but I agree with Eddie. I think Holland is the best nine in the sport right now. It's a beautiful game. Uh, Lewandowski, no, come on now, Lewandowski, um, I mean, of course, Luis Suarez, but he's not, you know, number one right now, but y'all forgetting Holland. about Big Rom, boy, y'all forgetting about my boy Big Rom over there at Chelsea, son, come on now, come on now, come on, man, get out of here, we'll see, man. we'll see, I will say, uh, Holland is gonna dominate this group, it's a very weak group, he is yeah. going to drop his nuts all over this group. Just once you get out the group, Holland really disappears once you get in the knockout stage. Go look historically back on what he's done in the knockout stages. He kind of disappears when he plays Tier 1 teams. But we'll see what happens. Maybe he's grown. And one thing I, I do want to say, every- one take I want to say real quick with Booty when we were talking about um, uh, the, the uh, well, Portuguese league with Sporting is they just got uh, promoted to the top five leagues in the world, right? Because French league just got demoted. So yep, Messi, right. Messi is now not in the top five league anymore. You feel me? But sporting is, you know what I mean, in, in Porto, you know, so. Benfica, Porto, Sporting. And I always forget that fourth one. Yeah, I think, so, I think yeah. they're the fourth rank league uh, with as far as like coefficients, yeah. Yeah. Is it yep. four? I think they're five. The four or five? I, I thought... I, I thought Legum dropped down to five from four or something. Some of that. No, Legum dropped to six. Dropped to six. And Portugal went to five. Yeah. And then Whoa. Portugal went to five. Whoa. That's what I'm yeah. saying. La Liga's two, EPL one. Sure. The third one is the Bundesliga. And yeah. the fourth is Serie A. Italian. Man. Serie A. That pickup league they got going on on in France, man. Shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. That Sunday no, pickup league. Just- Let's move on to Group D. This one, this one is crazy because it's almost the same group. We've got Inter, Real Madrid, Shakhtar, and Sheriff Tiraspol. I think we can all agree. <laughs> Sheriff is going to finish. In, yeah, they're going to finish. Bob Marley is going to see this group and shoot the sheriff. They are done. <laughs> all in fifth place. What's really, <laughs> what's really interesting is these three teams were in the exact same yes. group last year, and it was a total. Shit show. Like, yes. nobody expected what we saw to happen. Uh, I'm going to go and pass it over to the Inter fan. Spencer, you can go first on this group. Hey, I was going to say I wanted to go first with this group. Go I'm for it, bro. About this group, number one, Inter. I have Inter up top. The reason I have Inter up top is because – they may have gotten rid of Lukaku, which is going to be a big telltale. I haven't got to watch any of the Serie A games, but I did see the highlights for the game they played today. They just signed a new player in Korea, and I'm talking gas. This dude, Korea. Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, yeah. Joaquin Korea. No, no, no. Joaquin. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, Joaquin. Thank you, Joaquin. He's on fire right now. On fire. Um, You're right. In second, I have Real Madrid, but He's man. Fighting. Hey, hey, hey. I, I, I really, I really, I really, uh, I really like Shakhtar, 
because I feel like they're one of those underdog teams too. But um, I'm going to put Inter, Real, Shakhtar, and then Bob Marley, who shot the sheriff. That's my pick. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, I don't think we have any other fans of these other teams, so let's just go reverse order. Uh, let's go, Chris. Who you got in Group D? Christian. Christian. Sorry, I'm my bad. Christian. Chris. I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. It's I just love, one syllable. It's a one syllable thing. I I always call people a one syllable name. I don't know, Christian. He, he loves oh. Jesus. He's a Christian. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Exactly. In my opinion, exactly how it is, bro. Same thing. Inter Real Madrid Shakhtar. Inter-Real, Shakhtar, fucking Bob Marley, like you said. Bob Marley. <laughs> I'm just going to put Bob Marley for all these teams. All right, cool. Get Bob. Uh, let's go with Eddie. Who you got? Group D. Yeah, I got Real Madrid first, Inter second, and obviously Shakhtar third, and Sheriff last. All right, so talk to us. Why do you have Real Madrid first? Uh... Inter did sign one of my favorite players in FIFA, which is Joaquin Correa. Uh, okay. I've been following him for quite some time in Lazio. He's like a good center forward, right wing striker to have in FIFA. He was like 79 for quite some time, but yet he he's always had like an 85 potential. But uh, I, don't, I just don't really see the chemistry working out all too well with Inter. I know it worked out well, but they did lose – the big man Romelu, Romelu Lukaku, Romelu, sorry. So I think Real Madrid's going to be able to pull off. Uh, I know they just lost two of their best center backs, if not the only center backs they have. But uh, I think with experience has it. I mean, they have the money, so I'm sure they'll go out and splash some cash. But other than that, I think uh, they'll pull it off. They're the most experienced in this tournament. So. Right. Okay. I dig that. Mario, who you got? Uh, I want to say Real Madrid, number one. Number two, Inter Milan, Shakhtar, third, and Sheriff. Uh, I'm a big – I think out of the Spanish league, I am a Real Madrid fan because yeah. uh, Casemiro, Tony Kroos being from uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, now David Alaba is a Bayern Munich player. And so I want to follow up. Um, I think Real Madrid is going to stun some players or some teams in this tournament uh, because it's a new face, new generation. And uh, the I'm sure Ancelotti got many weapons to use. He does. He does, for sure. I definitely agree. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Booty, who you got? Group D. Most important thing to point out in this group, and I'm going to be quick, Inter, Real, it's almost like they're the same team right now. New coach, lost a lot of guys, uh, lots of chemistry to rebuild. So yep. at that point, you got to ask yourself who's going to find it first. I believe in Ancelotti more than I do our old boy. Um, uh, what's, what's, oh, his, what's his face? Uh, why am I forgetting Inzaghi. his name? Thank you, Inzaghi. Um, I think even though Inzaghi's had success in Syria, I think it's going to take a minute. Um, I got to put Inter below Brazil University, too, because you know Shakhtar is coming to fuck. They line everything up. They get the lube out. They fuck. They're here to fuck. <laughs> so, that's, that's, and that's it. They always are. Every time we count them out, they show up. So I'm not counting them out. Um, I'm going to go Inter out, baby. I'm going to go Real because Ancelotti is going to figure it out. I know they look shaky right now, but they got time. Um, I don't think Inter figure it out. Um, and I think they're gonna they're gonna suffer a little bit because hey, Lukaku look good, man. But anybody's gonna look good when you got Martinez hooking you up, bro. So uh, and, and same and same can be said vice versa. So go Real, uh, Shakhtar, Brazil University, uh, and then Inter, and then hey, Sheriff's out of town, baby. What you got, Hugh? <laughs> yeah, just like you said, uh, both new coaches, Real Madrid. Somebody said this earlier. Lost their center backs. Inter lost Hakimi who was a really big piece for that offense. I yeah, do I like how uh, Inzaghi is starting to – he's keeping his three-center-back formation that Conti had. But like you said, okay, so if we look at who they lost as a coach and who they gained, 
You lost Sedan, you got Ancelotti. It's a like for like for me. Ancelotti has had tons of success in Champions League as a player and a coach, and he's already coached Real Madrid to a lot of success. He's got a lot of weapons. I think they're going to do very well. Center backs are the issue for me. We'll see how they can patch that up. It looks like he's actually playing Alaba at left back and not at center back like at Bayern. So that's going to be interesting. Marcelo's uh, hurt. With Los, Los Celos hurt? I think so. No, Marcelo. Oh, Marcelo. Yeah, yeah, Marcelo. Yeah, yeah. I think he is hurt. Uh, he'll be a big piece because he's just a, a Champions League hardened player. He, he yeah. just knows the game, knows the league, uh, and has done it before. With Inter, I'm very concerned with – they're, they're missing Lukaku and Hakimi, uh, and they they signed Dzeko, which is a great player. Not like for like with Lukaku, but it's still a very good player. And they also signed Hakan Shalanoglu from AC Milan, who I yeah. fucking hated <laughs> so much because he was given the 10 jersey, but his technique was awful. He was praised because of his work ethic off the ball and his defense. And when you sign a 10, you don't sign him for work ethic and defense. You sign him to be a creator with technique. So we'll see how he does. But for me, Barella is the best player on that team. Maybe Lautaro Martinez. Uh, those two, I think, are going to have to do a lot uh, against Real Madrid. Not to mention, Real Madrid still have that world-class midfield of Casemiro, Cruz, and Modric. So uh, I don't think Shakhtar are going to crack into those top two. They did just get that Italian coach from uh, Sassuolo. His name is slipping my mind. Um, but we have seen amazing things from him. Um, De Zerbi uh, from Sassuolo, he always, he always challenges teams in, in uh, Serie A. So he's already created a really good identity. I've, I've caught a few of their games when they qualified for Champions League. And they're just loaded with Brazilians. Pedrinho is a player you need to keep on your map. Dodo, uh, Tyson. Uh, Tete, who's the guy that shook up Real Madrid last season and scored a whole bunch of goals. So with that being said, I'm going to go Real Madrid, Inter, Shakhtar, and Bob Marley, who shot the sheriff. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> let's move on to Group E. And with this one, we're going to start off with Mario and Christian. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with Mario first. We've got Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Benfica, and Dynamo Kiev. Hey, dude, just real quick, I have a question. When it comes to um, Hyk, the kind of Lewin, I don't know how to pronounce the name, dude, who left Ace Milan, Sean yeah, Do you still yeah. fuck with him or no? No. He's on Inter. Fuck you. No. I didn't like him at Ace Milan, and it's it's even worse that he's at Inter. Exactly. Oh. He went to the Nemesis, for sure. I was, I was at, all right, come on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always right. a bad sign, Hugh, when, like you were saying, like when, when the best thing you could say, well, you know, he works hard. No, fuck you. You're a 10. That shouldn't be You're the right. quality. Right. You shouldn't yeah. have to work hard at all. It should, it should just be there for you. It should be natural. Yep. Mario, take it away. All right. Group B. All right, group B. Uh, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, uh, Benfica, and Dynamo Kev. Uh you know, I'm a Bayern Munich fan. I know that beating Barcelona 8-2, to two, that was the last game that they faced. They're going to try to do it again. But at the same time, um, I do believe that Bayern Munich is the strongest team in that table um, because more of their team work, not just individual now, Barcelona has to find a, a different identity without Messi in the in the squad. So uh, they're going not. I'm not going to say they're going to struggle, but I believe that Barcelona will um, just. It won't be the same. Like they probably won't be as dangerous uh, or or uh, intimidating, you know. Whereas Bayern Munich. That would be the team to beat, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, I'm just going to say Bayern Munich is going to win every game in that table. Um, Barcelona coming second. Uh, so, yeah. And Pedri, Pedri not, I'm sorry, but Pedri's going to get tired in the group stages as well. Wow. Hot take. Damn. Pedri's getting tired. Not going to be yeah. an influence. 
Yeah, just because the demand this man is going through. Whereas Bayern Munich has, like, you can play two teams and probably beat every team in the table. I tell you what, Bayern definitely have more depth than um, than than Barcelona, and yeah, they, and that's gonna go team. big in this tournament or in this season, you know. One hundred ten percent. Actually, do you think Nagelsmann being the new coach for Bayern is gonna make a difference, or do you think they're gonna pick up right where they left off? Oh no, it's it, I've been watching these last games, and th- this Nagelsmann uh, style of play. Is uh, it's interesting. It's kind of leaving. It kind of scares me sometimes because it's leaving our fullbacks to play it more offensive and expose. Uh, of course, it's the same story, different uh game. Uh, our fullbacks uh exposed and playing. You know, two against ones or one against. You know, counterattacks. Yeah. But I think it's Lewandowski is gonna. You know fucking killed his tape table, you know, and I dig Nagelsmann you. is going to help him become, or Bayern Munich, uh, a, a top tier class. I dig Two. it. I dig it. Christian, take it away. Group uh, E, who you got? Well, as much as I want to say um, Barcelona, I'm going to have to go with Bayern. Barcelona. Wow. Benefica and Dynamo Kev. Being realistic here, I mean, it fucking hurts to say the shit, but Barcelona, we're in a reconstructive stage right now. It's a very depressing uh, point, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll get there a few more years. I, I got to be honest, you only lost Messi, right? Is it really a reconstruction if you're only losing one player? A star player. It's man. not... It's, it's not just about Messi, though, dude. It's about the whole foundation of the club. We've transitioned from Mesquite club to fucking the Super League, my nigga. Yeah. Like, we're still fucking holding on, like, Jack and fucking Rose. Like, let the nigga go. Like, you're dead, son. Like, the Super League's over with. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know? Yeah. Um, but, I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. I'm very passionate, uh, passionate about the shit because I don't like Florentino Perez and that Real Madrid scum shit. Um, <laughs> you booty, you know what I'm saying? Fuck, you know, fuck Madrid, dude. Fuck them. You know, that's how I feel. But, um, is yeah. there any chance Barcelona can beat Bayern Munich in your mind? Uh, yes, I agree. I, I believe so. Bayern Munich is a very nasty team still. Um, they're not the team that they were two years ago when they uh, assassinated or fucking massacred us. Um, but yes, I do agree. And Barcelona is a different team now too. With Messi, I, I think it is a, a good transition with him leaving for also himself and Barcelona. I'm I'm very anxious to see Barcelona without Messi and Messi without Barcelona. You know what I'm saying? Um, Interesting. Yeah. And Griezmann, I believe he's going to step up um, into the break. Uh, Coleman already said that he's he's depending on Coutinho. So yeah, that's how I feel. Sure. Perfect time. Look at that. Uh, Spencer, who you got here? Group D. All right. <laughs> hot, hot D coming in. Hot E. Hot E. Hot e. It's a hot E now, Hugh. We're on the E. We're on the E, yeah. Who you got here, Spencer? Group E. The hot D. Group E, I got number one. Now... I still believe in Barcelona, even though Messi's gone. I don't really like Bayern, to be honest. They're a great team. They have some of the biggest depth when it comes to all the rosters of teams. I believe they have a great bench. They have players they can pull off the bench that are young, that will come in and they understand the game, and they have a lot of chemistry. That's just something I believe. But my order would be Barcelona, Bayern, I've got Dynamo, Kev, and then Benfica at the bottom. Holy fuck, you're just trying to... Cause chaos. What the hell? I said I did. Barcelona, Bayern, Dynamo, and then Benfica. Benfica. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Eddie, who you got here? Group E. Uh, for me, it's pretty straightforward. Bayern, Barca, Benfica, Dynamo, Kiev. I think Bayern's going to just kind of cruise through this. 
Yeah, that's uh, pretty much what everyone's saying. Uh, do you think Bayern uh, draw or lose to anyone in this group? I think you Bayern think that's capable. Draw one game out of Barca. Yeah, I agree. It, I was just it. thinking that. I agree. Okay, that could be a valuable point. Do you think Benfica draw any of the two top tier teams in this team in this group? I don't think so. No, no. 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 I don't think you think uh, or Dynamo Kiev kind of has it in them to uh, get a you know a result more than I don't know. Huh? Yeah, point. Okay. I think it's gonna be tough. Yeah. Uh, I'm inclined to agree with all y'all, except for Spencer. That was a very bold take on this group. I think it's Bayern Munich, FC Barcelona, Benfica, and Kiev. Uh, I will say I think Bayern Munich do not win every game just because they have a new coach. So I I think they're going to struggle a little bit initially. Uh, And I really think Memphis Depay is – I think he's going to step up in the Champions League. I'm very excited to see Griezmann, Depay – and uh, who's that other uh, Bra- Braithwaite or, or you know, Ansu Fati getting, getting some minutes in Champions League. You don't really have any other options for, for Barcelona, but I think those are your three best front players. You, got, you, you got still have bro, Nigel. Bro, 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 bro. Sit, sit his ass on the bench. What? <laughs> hand, out, hand out waters. He can hand out waters. No, man. Coutinho is not the difference maker on that team. He cannot. I don't think he can fit in there. And I think Coleman well, has made that clear. I'm just adding Who would to you that. rather? Cout- Wait, what? To that front three, you want to add Coutinho? No, I was saying I'm not like adding Coutinho to make a difference. I was just adding to what you were saying about it's all the, the attack and that they, Barcelona had to had to pick from. Like, well, I would rather. The- yep, I would rather Ansu Fati. I would rather Dembele. I agree. Um, I, I would agree. rather that little kid uh, Puig. Puig. Then Coutinho. I'd put Coutinho at like seven. Just because we haven't seen him play at a high level in a long time. He was subbing in for Bayern when they went on that Champions League run. Uh, so, you know, I, I, they, they have him just because they bought him. And I, don't, I think they're kind of stuck with him. But, uh, yeah. yeah, that's who I got. Bayern Munich, FC Barcelona, Benfica, and Kiev. Who, do you, who you got? I'm going to keep it exactly the same, man. Exactly how it is. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. The Bayern Munich train keeps rolling. Um, I, I'll say this, man. Uh, somebody had mentioned – you know, I, I forgot who it was that I can't see because the video is off now. But one of y'all had mentioned, you know, Bayern, it's it, it's boring. They're boring because they just pick up where they leave off. They keep doing what they're going to do. If I had to compare them to and, and Americanize them, if I had to compare them to a team, I would say they're the San Antonio Spurs of the Champions League. Huh. They, they show <laughs> up. They do nice. what they do. It's not fucking sexy. You don't care about anybody on the team, really. None of the team, you know, is necessarily like a big superstar. It's maybe like Lewandowski. Um, and maybe Neuer. Um, other than that, it, it's it, it's the train that keeps rolling. It keeps feeding. Um, they keep eating as long as you keep feeding them, you know. So I'm gonna go Bayern. Um, Barcelona. I'm gonna piggyback off of what Chris, I think Christian said. We were talking talking about the rebuild. Close your eyes for a minute. I'm gonna get, hit y'all with a hot take. Um, I know you know Hugh. You just mentioned to him. You know you only lost Messi. You know how is it a rebuild? I think the rebuild started when they accidentally bought Griezmann for that much money. That's when the rebuild truly started because you already didn't know where he was going to fit in. You had all these youngsters we just mentioned, Puig, you know, being being one of them. You still have Busquets there. You still have, you know, it, there's there's still like old pieces, young pieces. Uh, Dembele, like you said, still there and, and, and sucking dicks. Uh, you know, you got fucking Coutinho <laughs> still handing out waters. So it's like some of them going to have to go. Some of them going to have to be the future. Um, that rebuild started when they made that mistake of signing Griezmann, but they're going to be able now that Messi's gone. I think they can get some sort of use out of Griezmann, and if they don't, you sell them quick because that stock is steady dropping. Um, so I'm I'm gonna keep it exactly how it is. Um, Benfica, don't forget about them. I'm gonna throw them in my top five. They're actually one of the top five clubs in the world who have, who have made the most money off of transfers the last ten years. So that's a that's a little stat for you. I'm throwing out there. Uh, Jao Felix, um, they, you know, pick, go back and look, pick a name. They get guys, they sell them high, uh, just like Ajax or, or Dortmund, uh, also in that category. So um, we're gonna, we're gonna, hot take for for Benfica. We're gonna see a name we haven't heard, um, and we'll know the name by the end of this group. Dang, I like that a lot. I do like that a lot. 
All right, we're moving on to Group G. This is Lille, Sevilla, Salzburg, and Wolfsburg. This is kind of a weak group, so let's go through this quick quickly. I'll give everybody 30 seconds to drop their pick and say why. Uh, for me, Sevilla, I'm going to start first. Sevilla is just a European fairy tale. They always somehow manage to get the job done. I think finally they will not find themselves in Europa. I think they're going to actually finish top two and uh, make it to the knockout stage. I think we saw them do that last year against Dortmund and then get slapped around by Holland. But uh, I'm going to go Sevilla, Salzburg, Lille, Wolfsburg. Lille did finish first in the French League, but they sold a lot of their players like they typically do. And they also lost their head coach. So they're kind of fragmented right now. I don't see them having the same strength. Just like we did in 2019, Booty, I was very high on Lille. It's going to be the same thing. They did really well, but they sold off everybody to make a profit. So uh, Sevilla, Salzburg, Lille, Wolfsburg. Who you got, Booty? Yeah, uh, I'm going to stick with that too, man. Uh, Lille, I'm just sick of hearing about them. <laughs> just go away. <laughs> uh, other than, than shout-out to Tim Weah. Tim Weah is over there, USA ooh, boy. Ooh, so ooh, ooh. I'll, I'll root for him all day. Hey, if he pops out. And, and does some shit, scores a couple goals, man, then, then by all means, man. Uh, but Sevilla is – Sevilla. Sevilla is, takes the dick out. They stick it in. They put it back in. They go home. So, Sevilla, okay. they're going to do it again. That's what they do. Hell, yeah. I go Sevilla, uh, Salzburg. Good to see Wolfsburg back in the Champions League, man. That's a good That's a good little uh, sneaky FIFA squad back in the, you know, the 07, 08 days. Um, yes. So – yeah, I'll take the same same as you had, Hugh. All right. Uh, Mario, who you got? Group G. Okay. Uh, group G. Uh, thank you. Uh, I really like Sevilla, but I don't. I see them finishing third uh, with Wolfsburg being second and Leo being first. Uh, Renato Sanchez is doing great work in France. Sevilla, I feel they're just going to – I think their mind is already on Europa League. And um, Salzburg – no, Wolfsburg <laughs> is going to be good in the Bundesliga and they're just going to just chill with it. So, that's it. I'm sorry. Can you, can you say those again? What are your top four? Sorry. Okay, uh, it, it was Leo, Leo finishing first, Wolfsburg being second, and Sevilla being third, and Salzburg being fourth. Wow, this one, I think everyone's going to have different ones here. I like that. All right, let's go, Spencer, who you got? So, uh, I actually like Salzburg. I don't have them taking the first or second spot, but I have them taking third for sure. As for the first, I have Really, really, really think Sevilla will take the head of this group. I yep. think that uh, Steele is going to come in second with Salzburg and Wolfsburg at the bottom. The reason I like to watch Sevilla play is uh, I feel like they're one of those teams also coming from the Spanish league that has um, a strong fan base, and it's more of just like their – what's the word I'm looking for? I know a bunch of Spanish league teams say like they play for their club and they have that honor when they play their football. And stuff like that, but I feel like Sevilla is one of those clubs that's like very, very dominant in the passion they come for the pitch and how you know you see when they celebrate goals, they have the goalkeeper running up to the, the other side of the field to celebrate with everybody. Like yeah. that's the type of stuff that I like to see. And uh, those are my four. That's my so I have Sevilla, Leo, Salzburg, and Wolfsburg. Got it, Christian. Who you got? Um. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go with, same with uh, Spencer. I'm going to go Sevilla, Lille, Salzburg, and Wolfsburg. Uh, Renato Sanchez, like Mario was saying. Isn't that dude Kamavinga? Didn't he, isn't he over there? No, he's at no. Ren. He's at Ren. Oh, no. Ren. That's oh, Ren. That's right. Ren. Right. 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 Um, but your, your boy, um, Jose Font, he's a center back then, right? Yep. Yeah, he, yeah, he's cold. He, he's, he's a good player for sure. Like we were talking about before, like center backs, like Pepe and shit with Porto and stuff before. Um, oh, yeah, that was nice game. Um, but, yeah, Jose Font, good center back, uh, good experience. I think Lule's going to take second to be at first. 
Um, I like Papu Gomez too. That was a good signing for Sevilla. He fits really yeah, well. Was. Hell yeah. And at Copa America, he played beautifully. So, awesome. yeah, that's Eddie. what you got. Eddie, who you got? Group A. Hey, I have Sevilla top of the group. Yeah. And I actually have uh, Wolfsburg in second, Lille, and then Salzburg last. Salzburg last. Yep. Notice how they uh, they they called him RB Salzburg or FC Salzburg. It's no longer RB. They've taken the name RB, so they're not associated with Red Bull anymore. But it, we all know it's Red Bull Salzburg. They chugging Red Bull. Yeah. Okay. Good. That was an easy group. This next one, we're gonna go backwards to F because we accidentally skipped F. Uh, let's start with Spencer, since he caught that mistake. Spencer, who you got in Group F? <laughs> yeah. You already know. You already fucking know. Also, Man United, with the signing of Cristiano, the GOAT, Ronaldo. What the fuck? Crazy, 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 and unbelievable signing that this is happening. But I feel like Manchester United... I've been waiting for this moment for the Champions League. They've been working. They have the players on the team now. They have this. I hate Manchester United. I literally hate them. But the fact that Ronaldo's back there, I feel like this is the, the step, the pep in their step that they need to take them, take them far in this Champions League. All um, right, give me your top four. Top four, Man United. And <laughs> Atlanta, I, have, I have Atlanta. 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 Real, Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Ilicic. And you got Villarreal in third? Yes, I do. Young boys last. Mm. And that's my picks. Okay, I dig it. Uh, let's go. Let's move on over to Booty. Randomness. Man, go if you me. if you like to watch young boys get slammed, this is the group for you. <laughs> right here. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get you are it explicit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is gonna be Catholic League all day with young boys in fourth. <laughs> young boys in fourth. I'll tell you what. Cool thing to point out about this group: we got the we got the Europa final rematch of Villarreal and, and United. So that that's pretty wow. cool. Uh, United right. winning this group. Uh, give me Villarreal. I love Atlanta, man, but I gotta, I gotta see a little more. I gotta see a little more. And Villarreal shows up for for big tournaments, man. Your current Europa <laughs> League champions, I can't count them out yet. Uh, so, United, Villarreal, Atlanta, young boys, go home, baby, and <laughs> get the Vaseline out. It's gonna be sore. It's a grown man. It's game. a grown man's game. <laughs> with young boys, and young boys playing. <laughs> Uh, let's got, move you? on over. I'll go next. Here we go. Uh, Man U, of course. This is an easy one. Um, this next one is difficult. I'm only going to say Atalanta, Villarreal, just to flip on booty, just to try and get some points there. Uh, it's Really, it's a toss-up for me. I have no idea between these two teams. And then, as booty said, this is going to be a Catholic-style league. For the young boys, they will get slammed out of this tournament, for sure. Let's pass it on over to Mario. You seem to like that joke. I thought that was, that was – I loved your reaction there. Father Johnson, he's coming. <laughs> coming to check on the young boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It's going to hurt. Holy fuck. Oh, my God. I know. Booty, you got it. No, my nigga. I know. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know what? It's not fair. This is not the first time the young boys have been in Champions League, and Booty has been, he's had these jokes yeah. like recycled. These every great. time, every time. Juventus took care of one time, man. That yeah, was fun. Right. That was fun. It wasn't fun to watch. These young boys. <laughs> it's illegal shit. Oh, God. Mario, who you got in this group? Top four. Okay, young boys are definitely going to get trampled by each team. <laughs> 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 In this league, but uh, I'm very, I'm very, very excited to see Ronaldo go back to Manchester United, and he's not going to be the same Ronaldo from whenever I we all fell in love watching him when we were younger. 
but he's definitely gonna uh he's definitely gonna score a lot of goals and uh Keep going. having having Varon like another Real Madrid player there to you know secure some wins would be uh great. But yeah uh, Manchester United first, second will be B E Atalanta and then Villarreal third and then Young boys getting thrashed. I dig it. It's Mario, uh, not Mario. Eddie, who you got? I got Man United top in the group. I was going to say Atalanta, but I just realized they lost one of their best players, Alejandro Gomez. He's, he was the number 10 for Atalanta. That's right. He moved on to Sevilla. So I had Villarreal finishing second, Atalanta, and then Young Boys dead last. All right, Christian. I got yeah. Man U, Atalanta, Villarreal, and Young Boys. The reason why I say Atalanta, they did just lose Papu Gomez, but they also have a few other good players. I like your boy Robin Gossens, Gossens the yep. German. Yep. Cole, clinical player, showed his work in the Euros. Crucial. You got some good forwards, some Colombians. You got Muriel, you got uh, Zapata. Um, okay, let's, who else, who else they, they, uh, they have that, the, uh, Ilicic. Oh, Zap, Zapacosta, too. Zapacosta, that's right. Yes, yeah, from Chelsea. Remember when he did, like, 2018, that good stunt? Yeah. Yeah, Atalanta are one of those teams that, uh, they have a really good identity because of their coach, Gasparini. They've really cemented themselves as a top-four team in Serie A, and it doesn't yeah. matter who they have, they just find a way to finish top four or get their way through the Champions League group. I'm really surprised Booty did not put them in second. We shall see what happens. Let's move on yeah, to – go ahead, Christian. Demiral. Go ahead, say it again. I said Demiral, the Turkish center back from uh, Juventus. They just got him too. So. Dude, yep, spot on. They also signed uh, – you just sparked a, another signing. Uh, Matteo Lovato who was the starting center back for the U21 Italian team uh, during this previous summer Euro. He had a fantastic Euro. Uh, for me, I always, whenever I see a young player get a red card between 18 and 21, for me, that tells me they're going to be a really good pro. I don't know why. If you look back to I all agree. the, I don't know what it is. You look back to like Messi, you look back, there's a player, Victor Osimhen. Whenever these young players get a red card at such a young age, you're like, these guys have so much passion for the game that they cannot be controlled. And they just, they unleash and get that red card. It takes that red card for them to realize they need to fucking chill out and they've got 10 years left. But, um, it shows they great. get guts. Exactly. Exactly. Like you have no yeah, man. You have they're, no just, they're dragging on the I floor. Was- they just they can't even they can't even walk straight, man. <laughs> fucking waddling all over the place. Simeone life. <clears throat> Booty, I'm gonna let you start. Uh, I'm gonna let you finish this last group because this is your boys. Yes, sir. Pass it on over to Spencer, the Chelsea fan. What you got, Spencer? I don't know. You start it and then pass it over to Spencer. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. All right. You already know, man. Yeah. Allegri's back. The swag's back. He already told Ronaldo. Go. Go ahead. Move on. It's fine. He's already got. He's got. He's got our boy. Fucking it, dude. Put the yeah. Put the thumbs up, dude. Everybody. Everybody's gonna forget. We just brought in Locatelli. Nobody's been talking Oof. about it. Nasty. Uh, some guy named Weston McKinney. He's all right. From Little M. Te- Little Elm, <laughs> Texas. He all right. Uh, yeah, this he- man knows how to use Dabala in the false nine. Uh, and also, they're working on bringing on, bringing in either Moise Keen. Um, also, shout out to Gunner Mike sent me some some Twitter info the other day that Obama Yang is in the mix too. With who? With Juve. No. Wow. Now. That's no shit. I'm leaning more towards Moise Keen. Uh, you yeah. know, we're talking the guy who went through the academy. He loves Juve. He wants to come back. He's already said he wants to come back. And Fat Rayola was already in Turin uh, yesterday talking to him. So I think something's going down there. Uh, now, there is the whole issue of the last time that he was in Italy. You know, he got it. There, there was there was some some racist stuff going on because um, it's Italy. But uh, 
Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna take. I'm still gonna take Juve to win the group because even though Chelsea, I think, has a stronger team right now, uh, Chelsea gonna Chelsea, baby. As I always say, you expect them to win, they won't. When you don't expect them to win, they do. That's why I, I Chelsea annoys the fuck out of me. Um, bringing in Lukaku, that's great. That, that's great. That's great. But what happens when his back's towards goal, man? What happens when that, when you got that one on one? What happens when he scores? Is, is team is Timo setting him up now? Because you don't you don't have Martinez no. anymore setting you up. Timo's gonna be too no. busy trying to fucking you know shank a shot. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, but if you're gonna go up against a a back line that knows how to how to defend Lukaku, I'm gonna take Bonucci and Delict all fucking day. So give me give me Juve. Give me Juve. Give, give me Chelsea. Uh, Third team, uh, mm, uh, mm. Zenit or Malmo? And let's go Zenit. Let's go Zenit. Zenit. Yeah, they've they've been in this tournament a couple of times. Malmo, they're glad to be here. They're gonna wave. They're gonna say hey. We used to have Zlatan. You know, it's it's gonna yeah. But I'll tell you what, uh, Chelsea beats Juve the first game. Hot take, right? Juve beats Chelsea that second match. Just like right. it happened with Barcelona last year. Nice. Spencer, take it away. Okay, I'm here. Batter, batter up, baby. Batter <laughs> up. What's going to happen when Lukaku gets the ball on his back? He's going to turn with his right foot, take a touch with his left, and bury it to the bottom top corner. The bottom top corner. <laughs> Either corner. Doesn't matter. Either one. This guy is a goal scoring machine. Yep. In my opinion, the best striker in the world Agreed. right now. Agreed. Um, now, as to say, with the who's setting him up, there's one guy in particular that I love on Chelsea who has came up from the youth academy. His name is Mason Mount, and this guy is class, quality player. I feel like every game he plays, he gets a little bit better. Mason Mount. Who's Mason Mount? Oh, well, why don't you watch when they play Liverpool tomorrow? And you're like, Whoa. <laughs> um. My second team, Juventus. Now, I love Juventus. Juve, they're a great team. They have a lot of depth. They have a lot of chemistry right now. They may have lost Ronaldo, but in all honesty, I think they were scoring as many goals as they had with him as they were without him. You know, I think uh, Chie- Chiesa, Chiesa on the wing is a solid signing that they had, and he can definitely score goals, set up goals. The false nine, Dybala, like you said, is a great position that he plays. He's kind of a... Uh, all over the place when it comes to his positioning. And uh, another guy I like on there is Cuadrado. I like seeing him come as a right back, left back, and then the next thing you know, he's playing like striker or left wing, and you're like, what is this guy doing? You know, he's all over the field. Totally agree. Um, so my top teams right now, I'd say Chelsea number one. I think that Chelsea's going to beat Juve in Italy. Um, Oof, I, think, I think that Chelsea – Probably will beat Juve both times, just because I'm just a diehard Chelsea fan. But uh, that's definitely going to be the, the hardest, hardest game out of this group. Um, I think there's going to be an upset with uh, Zenit and Juventus, just because I feel like Juventus is, will just crumble. I don't know. Um, so I have Chelsea, Juve, Zenit, and Malamo. And then my crazy thing of this group is going to be Zenit upsetting Juve. Ooh, that's bold. It's going to be a low-scoring game. It's going to be a 1-0 game. 1-0. Interesting. I dig it. Let's move to Christian. Who you got? Uh, pretty much straight up. Chelsea, Juve, Zenit, Malmo. Chelsea's going to kill shit. Juve's going to choke on some shit. <laughs> and fucking Zenit, Malmo to do shit. I dig it. That was quick. Nice. Uh, Eddie, who you got? I got... Uh, I got Juventus, Chelsea, Zenit, and Malmo. Stupid. <laughs> uh, I I like Chelsea. I think they have a strong squad, but I don't know. I think this is the group that uh, it's going to surprise a lot of people. I think Juve is going to do fairly well with their experience and uh, on top of the group. When when you I expect Chelsea to win, they don't. When you don't expect them to win, they do. I.e., <laughs> yep. Champions League final. We just saw it. 
everybody in the world had yes. fucking Pep. Yeah, well, Pep brought that upon himself with his stupid fucking lineup, but mm-hmm. let's not talk about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mario, who do you have in Group H? Uh, I think Chelsea is going to dominate the group. Uh, Juventus coming in second. And I don't even know who the other last two teams yeah, were. Zenit will, Zenit will be in third, and uh, Malmo will be in fourth. Chelsea is looking very, very scary. Uh, I think they can end up – I wouldn't be surprised if they end up in the Champions League final. I'm going to say it right Damn, now. Damn, back-to-back. That's bold. That's wow. a hot take. Yeah. All right, so – go ahead. What? That's it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for me, Group H, I'm going to actually – I like the Juve pick. Um, I think Lukaku is going to do well. And here's my hot take. I think Chelsea and Juve are both going to win their games at home. So, it's going to be an evenly 1-1. It's just going to depend on how these other two teams handle Zenit and Malmo. And even though last year we saw Chelsea – have an amazing back line. They had an incredible record of the number of clean sheets they kept. Um, I think this year uh, teams start to figure out how to break them down and get in behind them. Uh, Juve, though, on the other hand, this is going to be a completely different team than we've seen the last two years. Allegri, like Booty said, Allegri does, he must give Dybala some kind of steroid or magical pill because whenever Allegri and Dybala are together, Dybala is one of the best players in the world. I, I, this, these, this last weekend, watching Dybala play under Allegri at, for Juventus, this is one of the best I've seen Dybala in, in a long time. And it feels like it's just Allegri and, and how he positions him and the role that he gives him. Uh, that being said, that back line is stout. I think the weakness for Juve is their, their backs. But Quadrado is proving to be a utility player, being able to play right back and right wing and, and just – He's, he's one of the best wingers in the world right now, right-back wingers um, on the international stage and the club stage. He's just continued to provide chances and score goals. We saw it uh, for Colombia at Copa. He got his team to the top four, and uh, we saw him do it with Juve last year in the uh, Champions League. Uh, so I'm going to go Juve, Chelsea, Zenit, and Malmo. Zenit has uh, some sneaky good players. I don't know if you guys have heard of this guy. His name is Zachariah Arshvin. Um, I'm going to have to look up how to properly. Oh, ah, fuck. I can't spell his name right now. Um, but this kid is a stud. He is um, He's 18 years old. He's Russian, and he is taking the Russian league by storm. He's easily one of the best players in that league. Look out for him to really shine during the Champions League and probably be on the move in either January or over the summer. Uh, so give me Zenit and Malmo to round out Group H. I like that. I and like that. that will be the end of our Champions League groups. Booty, why don't you close us out on this episode? We're going to close this out, baby. Uh, thank you, Hugh. I appreciate that. I appreciate the handoff. Uh, yeah, norm- normally, boys, we usually do like a, a shout out. Everybody just gives a shout out to somebody. Um, be- because we have a lot of a lot of folks on the episode today, I, I think I- I'm going to do a collective shout out for everybody, so we can keep keep Appreciate moving that. along. Um, shout out today uh, to the New Orleans Sewage and Water Board. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> and pressure is on, Jack. You're on the fucking clock. Mm-hmm. So. With that being said, yeah. here in New Orleans, everybody listening around the world, we got some folks out there in Ireland that love us. Scotland, shout out. We got some folks out there in South Korea, actually, Eddie. Uh, we had some South Korea following. Uh, we would have the North yeah. Korea following, um, but, you know, that, that's that's under wraps. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it, it's a crazy following we've been having on this Footy Fetish show, man. Um, shout out to everybody. If y'all don't know, we got a pretty serious storm coming through. Uh, to everybody who is in New Orleans, we want to say – Stay safe. Our real shout out tonight is to everybody that is dealing with this, uh, whether you're evacuating or not. Everybody, stay safe. Um, let people know if you're staying. Let it sounds stupid, but seriously, let your neighbors know. Let your friends know. Uh, start some group texts and and stay in touch as much as you possibly can. Um, anybody who's been through a pretty serious storm, 
Um, a lot of times it, 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 we take it for granted. We don't think it's going to be as serious. And it's better that you take it seriously rather than you take it seriously now rather than you have to take it seriously later. So uh, I know Ocho and I are both staying. So we'll be here. We're going to hold it down. Um, it's not looking very friendly right now. But things can change. And uh, we're, we're going to stay in touch. So footy fetish lives on. Uh, through hurricanes, it, we, we don't stop. We don't stop. We're gonna, we're gonna, like we said, we live this, we eat this, we breathe it. Uh, we bring on people who live it, breathe it, eat it, snort it, put some, some, some footy in their coffee in the morning. It's, it's what we do here at the show, boys. We very much appreciate you guys coming on. It was very cool to have you guys too because y'all are the first like group of people we've had. We usually have like one or two. So it was very cool, and I think y'all did a great job yeah. too, letting each other speak. Um, that that that's all I got. Ocho, you got anything? That's it. I just want to give a shout out to the game of soccer. Without it, this would not have come together. Correct, man. Absolutely. Hey, thank you, guys. thank you guys for having us. We appreciate it. Y'all welcome back anytime. If y'all just want to come on the show and just rant, uh, we're always looking for that too. We love hot takes. So yes. y'all let us Absolutely. know. Y'all let us know. But in the meantime, follow us. We on the on the Insta, if y'all don't follow us already, boys, y'all go do it. Everybody listening, go do it. Uh, we're on Facebook. The Facebook kind of sucks. Do the Insta. Do the Insta. Um, right. So we're on that. Follow us on Spotify, on Apple, on you know Google Play. Add us. Follow us. It helps us out. It gets our name out there. Um, in the meantime, um, this has been the Footy Fetish Show. Q, I'm sorry to cut y'all off. Go for it. Can I- can I, before this show ends, can I tell you the last four teams of Champions League? Oh, yeah. Do it. Top four? It's a hell of a way to close yes. it out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, my last four of Champions League would be Bayern Munich. I have Bayern Munich, uh, Chelsea, uh, PSG, and I'm going to say Real Madrid is going to make it. Whew. Wow. Who's your finalist? That's my last four. That's it. That's it. Do y'all want to go last four real quick while we got this going? I'll write them down. Yes. Okay. Spencer, my last four is going to be Chelsea and Bayern in the final. I'm putting Barcelona and PSG. Barcelona. Yeesh. (laughs) All right. Christian. You don't know what he's talking about. (laughs) Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go PSG, Bayern Munich, Manchester United, and Chelsea. Okay, Eddie, who you got? I got Man City. I got Dortmund, Sevilla, and Bayern. What? Damn, these are fucking hot, dog. Sevilla, Burning yes. a hole in my paper. Fuck yeah, dude. Booty. Oh, Top four. PSG, Bayern, Juve, and Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. You? All right. Uh, PSG, Man City, Bayern, Chelsea. Oh. Nice. Sorry, man. Nice. I don't think, man, you get it together this year. <laughs> Okay. Not this year. Next year, definitely. Pep's already thinking about uh, it. Yeah. But that'll do it. We're definitely, uh, if, if there's a way we could do this again another night way along, later on in life, I'm definitely down. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We will sign Yeah, we actually – we definitely. We, we do a really good job in the studio. We have a nice studio set up. It makes – the in-person – studio podcast makes for an even better podcast we try and do video as you guys saw the video makes the podcast even better so in person is is the best you could possibly do so in the future we'd love to have you guys come to the studio Yo, I'm, I'm definitely all right boys thanks for having us uh we'll catch up with you guys y'all soon. be safe yeah, y'all be safe bro thank y'all sure. so much we'll do boys we'll do this, all right this has been the footy fetish show where the fetish is real and the footy is soccer. Peace out, Boy Scouts. Darren Sharper, hold my dick. <laughs>